Hi, I'm Emily Rose. I'm a professional wildlife and pastel pencil artist, and I'm here with a mini series to help you get drawing. So this week, we're going to be looking at what makes a good reference photo and what you can do if you've got a bad reference photo, but no option to get another one. So firstly, what makes a good reference photo? Well, we need to make sure to begin with that it hasn't got a filter on it. You'll find that filters can really get in the way because what they've done is they've either reduced the tonal range or they've changed the colors. If you're making a decision as an artist to change your drawing and you put a, a filter on to help you, that's quite different. But if you just get a reference photo and draw from that with a filter on, you can find it a little bit challenging to follow sometimes as the colors aren't natural. And if you're trying to get a realistic drawing, you'll find that when you've finished it, it can look a bit bizarre and you'll realize that, oh, they've actually made those oranges overly bright and now my drawing looks really weird. So you want to find a good quality reference photo that hasn't been tampered with too much to start with. The next thing to look for, and this sounds obvious, but you'll be amazed how easy it is not to notice, is to really study the photo and make sure you've got the details and information in it that you need. So with my work, I don't put backgrounds on particularly. I might put on something like um, some branches or some foliage, but I don't put big backgrounds on. So for me, I need to check that my subject is properly in focus. If I've got just the focus perhaps on the head and then I look and realize that, oh, I can't see the paws, I can't see the tail and it's just a blurred out mess. It might look good as a photo, but you've got to think of it as a drawing. And because I don't put backgrounds on these works, I need to have a good amount of detail over the whole of the drawing and I can't just get away with smudging um, the paws of a, of a dog or something into oblivion because I've got nothing to blur it into. There's no background on these pieces. So really make sure that you've got the detail that you need in the photo. You haven't got an ear chopped off or something like that. Another thing to think about is the lighting for the photo. So this is similar to um, a filter in that if your photograph isn't properly lit, you won't be able to get the correct colours and the getting that structural form is quite tricky. So you don't want something that's backlit usually. Backlit obviously means that light is behind someone or your subject and the subject is largely in shadow and they seem to have this halo around them. It's so hard to draw from if you're trying to put details in because it would mean that the tonal structure for me, if I was backlit, is really limited. All of the lights around me and the around um, this, around the subject is overexposed and the subject themselves appears as a bit of a dark blob. So that's not particularly helpful. Generally speaking, try and get photos that have been taken outside. Natural lighting is best because it doesn't tamper with your colors and it should be um, lighting the subject quite fairly too. We shouldn't have a massive bias on one side or the other where, as I say, you've got something like um, a strong light coming in from the left and the right side of me is again, totally in shadow. So just check that you can see your subject properly and that you appear to have a good range of lights and darks in there. If you haven't got a good range of lights and darks, it's going to be so hard to get the subject to become 3D. And you'll often find that you have this problem if you're working with a photograph that's been taken at long distance and the camera isn't designed for it, such as on a phone. And what happens is you get obviously a grainy photo to begin with, but also the range of tones and colors is also squashed and the more you zoom in you think mm, the brown on um, that ear is the same as the brown on that ear but this one's in light and that one's in shadow but they appear the same so if you've got something like that going on it means that your tonal range and the colors in your reference photo have been squashed and you don't want to work from that it would be very very difficult to get a proper 3d form to come out so what do you do if someone asks you to draw their beloved dog or cat and they've passed away and the photos they've given you just aren't that good, but you want to do it for them. So this has happened to me a few times and it is quite tricky. So the first thing to do is logically ask if they've got any more photos. Now, even if the photos aren't the correct pose and the, the person specifically wants that photo used for the pose, you might find that they've got other photos that more accurately show the color of the fur or the subject is much better lit or it's a better resolution and you can get more details such as the direction of the fur. That is key in a pet portrait. You want to get the direction of the fur correct and make sure there's not little bits of um, pattern that's been missed 
on the original photo they want you to work from. So definitely ask them as well. Um, sometimes you might find they've got a, a smudge of white or something that's not been picked up and they'll need it in the, in the finished drawing. So if it's a, a pet portrait, that's the first thing to do. If you've just found a photo online that you love and you know it's not the right photo, but you want to give it a go, then look for other photos um, of the same subject. And again, you're looking for the same thing. You're looking to find details that you're going to need to create a convincing form. So you want a photo that's going to accurately show you the structure. For example, if I was drawing um, the horse behind me and it wasn't very well lit, but I really wanted to use that pose specifically, then I could look at the anatomy of a horse and I could see where the muscles are that are most important, especially around the neck. And I did do this when I was um, creating this portrait, uh, sorry, this, this painting. I looked for other references that I could use, some of them um, scientific and anatomical, just to make sure I was getting in the important structural areas to create a rounded form here. So go and study your subject in short. And then again, for the colors, let's say we're doing a kingfisher, you've got a great photo, but the lighting's not that great. Go and look for another photo and use that other one as your reference for the colors. So in effect, you work from multiple photos. You could work from the first one for the pose and then you could work for an, from another one for the lighting and the colors. That is quite tricky and really you want a bit of practice before you jump into something like that. But something that definitely helps is giving yourself um, some time to play around on a bit of scrap paper. So you've watched the previous videos, you've decided which color of pastel mat you're going to use. Draw yourself out a detailed pack palette now and um, note each area, say, okay, these are my shadow pencils, these are my mid-tone pencils, and these are my highlight pencils. I can see them all in my color reference photo, can't see them all in my pose reference photo because the quality isn't so good, but I know I've got to use them all. And then it's much easier to get in all of those correct tones in the correct places. So a bit of planning. Generally speaking though, try and avoid working from reference photos that are below par because it will really make your life so much harder. So if you're looking for somewhere to find a reference photo, hop back a week and you'll find my um, previous video, which is linked down below on where to find a reference photo and what you need to do to make sure you're allowed to use it because we don't want to be stepping on people's toes. If in the meantime you'd like some feedback on a piece of work you're, uh, you've completed or you're struggling with or you've got some questions then join the community Emily Rose Fine Art Drawing Club. You'll find us on Facebook and it's welcome to, um, everyone's welcome to join and I'll get back to you once a week with feedback. In the meantime happy drawing!